Hello children. We will learn a lot from this one particular problem in elementary number theory. This problem came up in the NMTC contest, which is a mathematical contest in India. It's similar to American math competition, IOQM and UKMT. Let's see what we can learn from this one problem. As usual, we will start with the problem and then we will slowly backtrack into the concepts. So what is this problem about? It works with a particular function called the D function. It's a number theoretic function. Sounds like a mouthful, but it's actually very simple. So if you have D of, let's say, 4, it simply counts the number of divisors of 4. So how many divisors are there? 4 has 3 divisors, 1, 2, and 4. These are the positive whole numbers which divide 4. So D of 4 is 3. Why? Because there are 3 divisors of 4. Can you tell me what is D of 36 in the chat? What is the value of D of 36? Can you put it in the chat? So this particular problem works with the D function where D is the number of divisors and it asks the students to search for the smallest number n such that D of n minus 2 plus D of n plus D of n plus 2 is equal to 21. So if you take any number n, let's say 2000 and 2000, let's say the number n is 2000. What is n minus 2? n minus 2 is 1998 and n plus 2 is 2002. So we first construct all these three numbers, then we calculate d of each of them. And then we add them. Then we add them. Whatever the values are, we add them. We want the sum to be 21. The sum needs to be 21. And there might be multiple numbers n for which this works. We want the smallest number n for which this equation is true. It's a very interesting problem. We learn quite a bit from this one problem. The first thing we learn is parity check. This is a surprisingly simple but very effective strategy to solve interesting problem. I'll talk about it in a second. It, it is very simple, but you have to think a bit about it. Okay. The second thing is the number of divisors formula formula. So there is a an elegant formula to count the number of divisors of any number. Once you can prime factorize the number, you can easily count it. We will talk about that formula. And thirdly, we will talk about the special place of square numbers. Square numbers like 4, 9, 16 is a square numbers. Special place of square numbers while we are discussing the number of divisors of a number okay having said that let's start with parity check let's start with parity check so we the equation is this that dn minus 2 plus dn plus dn plus 2 is 21 now notice that this 21 the sum is odd if you think about it sum of three numbers can be odd in only two possible ways Either all three of them are odd, that's one case. The other case is only one of them is odd, the other two are even. So, we will first check which one of these two cases is possible, whether both of them are possible or not. So, the question is, when is D of anything, any number, when, when is this odd? 
when is the number of divisors of a number is odd. Now, this is only true if this number is a square quantity. This is only true if the number is a square quantity. This is a very important result in elementary number theory. You can check this by, you know, experimenting. Check with 1, check with 4, check with 9, 16. In each of these cases, it's the numbers, number of divisors is odd means the number itself is a square number. For example, let's say 16. What are the divisors of 16? We have 1, 2, 4, 8 and 16. So 5 of them. So D of 16 is 5. If a number is a non-square number, then it cannot have odd number of divisors. It has even number of divisors. So can you prove this? Can you prove this? If you can, put uh, an explanation in the comment section. The best commenter is usually invited to our channel for, you know, talking about an, an interesting problem. Okay. All right. So the square numbers are having odd number of divisors. We will use this fact. See, if all three are odd, then all three of them have to be square numbers. Now, that's not possible because the gap between the numbers is really small. The two square numbers, let's say one of them is k square, let's say n is a square number, it's k square. Then the next square number is simply k plus one whole square, right? The square number after k square has to be k plus 1 whole square. Now, what is the gap between these two numbers? What is the gap between k square and k plus 1 whole square? Okay, you can take, subtract them. So, this is k square plus 2k plus 1 minus k square, which is 2k plus 1. This is greater than or equal to 3 because k is not 0, k is 1 or more. So, 2k plus 1 is absolutely greater than or equal to 3. So, distance between two consecutive square numbers is at least three, three or more. But here the numbers are n, n plus two, n minus two. The gap of these input numbers is two. That's not possible. All of them cannot be squared numbers. So this case does not work. Not all of them are odd. So the only case that works is exactly 1 is odd, other 2 are even. Okay, so d among d of n minus 2, d of n, d of n plus 2, only one of them has to be odd. The rest of them are even. So, whatever, whichever one is odd, that is a perfect square. Now, we are looking for the smallest per square number, which can be part of these three numbers. And we can now brute force a little bit. So, how do we brute force? Let's write down the first few square numbers. And the answers are 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. 49 and so on. Now, if you calculate d of each of them, so d of 1, maybe I can do it here, d of 1 is 1, d of 4 is 3, we just found it, d of 9 is also 3 because 1, 3 and 9, d of 16 is 5, we saw that in this example right here, d of 25 is again 3 because 1, 5 and 25. D of 36, this one is a little bit more tricky. You can use the number of divisors formula and that formula is simply like this, that if a number n is p1 to the power q1, p2 to the power q2, up to pk to the power qk, then the number of divisors of n is q, the sum of the powers 
to add 1 to each of the power and you multiply it out. There is a proof to this. If you know why this is true, you can put that in the comment section. So we can use this formula for d of 36 or we can count it by hand. At any rate, we will see that 36 is 2 square times 3 square. So d of 36 is 9. 3 times 3. 2 plus 1 times 2 plus 1, which is 3 times 3, which is 9. And d of 49 is again 3. So it seems a little bit promising with, with this one, d of 36, which is 9. And remember, we want the sum to be 21. We want the sum to be 21. It has to be a large number. So if one of them is really small, 1, 3, or 5, or 3, then the probability that we will be able to get 21 becomes significantly reduced. So d of 36 seems really promising, but we may have to go even further. So let's try with d of 36. So a bit of brute force, brute force with d of 36. So if you check, d of 32, d of 34, d of 38, and d of 40. That is two numbers above 36, two numbers below 36 at the gap of 2. Then you will see that d of 36, sorry, this one is 9, 9, d of 38 is 4, and d of 40, well, 40 is 2 cubed times 5 to the power 1. That is 3 plus 1 times 2, 2 plus 1, sorry, 1 plus 1. So that's 8. So this combination actually works. 9 plus 8 plus uh, 4 is indeed 21. So the smallest value of n is 38. So d of 36 plus d of 38 plus d of 40 is indeed 21 where 38 is my n. The smallest value of n that might work. Of course you might say well what is the guarantee that none of these will work? Well there is no guarantee but if you do a bit of brute forcing just like I did and part of the NMTC problems are always like this. They, they involve, always involve a little bit of educated brute forcing. If you do that, you will see that none of these things actually work. One will na naturally not work uh, for, you can check. So we learned quite a bit from this one problem. We saw how parity check is useful. We saw how the divisors, number of divisors formula work. And we saw that squares have a special place when we are discussing number of divisors. So I hope you learned something from this video. Uh, if you can check out more videos in our website and our YouTube channel. And for resources regarding research for school, Olympiads, or leadership programs for Ivy League applications, you can check out our website. We have some wonderful resources there. Anyway, stay, take care, keep on doing good mathematics. I'll see you in the next one.